Hello and welcome to the weekly market update with me, David Madden. Today's date is Monday the 3rd of June 2019 and the time has just gone 12.01 British summer time. Um, it's been a fairly uh, negative start to the European session. Um, it's essentially it's a, it's kind of the same old story uh, of the last few days and weeks uh, whereby fairly high trade tensions uh, across the world, largely with the US at the centre of it, uh, is actually really continued to weigh on uh, global sentiment. Um, we are a bit lower in the we're a bit lower on major European markets today, but we have been f- f- we, we are, we're certainly off the lows of the session. Uh, there's obviously a few factors uh, going on uh, in relation to, to global trade tensions. Um, in the last few days, um, the Chinese levies on 60 billion dollars worth of U.S. goods they've kicked in. China is now looking at launching an investigation into the American delivery company FedEx uh, over allegations that FedEx deliberately uh, rerouted um, um, a goods um, that were destined for China for the, comp- for the company Huawei, which actually which, which were supposed to be uh, arrived in China but wound up in the U.S. instead. As uh, the investigation going on for that, this could be construed um, as a as a kind of a, a attack on an individual U.S. company, just as how um, the U.S. have, uh, have, have uh, strict, strict restrictions on Huawei, the Chinese tech giant's uh, products. So it could be seen as kind of a tit for tat. Um, in relation to the U.S. and Mexico, the trade tensions are still running high there. Over President Trump has threatened high tariffs on Mexican imports in relation to migration. This, all, this, you know, this comes not too long after uh, Mexico and the United States and Canada all agreed um, a new trade deal, um, a replacement to, to NAFTA. But of course, President Trump is going to, still bulldozing ahead with, with, his, with his threats. There, there. That's weighing on global sentiment. Speaking of uh, President Trump, uh, he's actually arrived in the UK today, um, and tensions are uh, in some quarters a bit high, um, given that President Trump is known to kind of actually weigh in on domestic affairs of other, of other countries. Uh, we, we might hear some commentary from President Trump uh, in relation to who we think should take over as Tory leader and, and in turn likely to be the next Prime Minister of the UK. He's already made a comment that Boris Johnson would, would make a good Prime Minister. The last time he visited the UK, he had no problem telling people what he thought in relation uh, to the UK's handling of, of Brexit negotiations, what, what the future. Um, and so it's, it's likely we could hear um, similar comments from President Trump. Uh, so th- things to kind of watching out for. We could, um, we could be there's the speculation that the U.S. could threaten uh, a, a, a narrower a sharing of intelligence with the U.K. in relation to the U.K.'s relationship with, with Huawei. Um, keep an eye out for any, any comments about potential trade deals down the line once the U.K. leaves trade. Once once the U.K. actually leaves the European Union, uh, because President Trump, because the U.K. you know post Brexit, Britain will want to be striking trade deals around the world. And they obviously, what, what we're looking for a good deal with the US, so we could hear some commentary from President Trump in relation to that. Um, these are all the kind of, you know, the, the kind of big issues um, of, 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 uh, of what's going on. So if we take a look now uh, at some of the major markets, starting off with the FTSE 100. <coughs> Global equities have, have a fairly similar theme, whereby um, the FTSE 100 hit a multi-month high in April, but since then we've had a, a lower low, a lower high and another lower low and this could be the sign uh, this could be the beginning of you know a further move to the downside um, in the FTSE 100 and also we look at global equities as well um, ultimately what we, we remain south of this red line here the 200 moving average on the FTSE 100 and that comes into play at 71.64 while we remain south of that we could see further downward pressure and we could be looking heading back toward this, this area here uh, the late February low in around 70.40 and the move below that by bring the uh, psychologically important 7,000 metric into play. Moves to the upside in the um, in the FTSE 100 could run into resistance in around the 30 moving average, or also this yellow line here at the 100 moving average, which comes into play essentially in around kind of 7,200. So that only is a big, it only is a big psychological number. But also we can see in a few occasions that metric did manage to act as support recently, so it, makes, so it could act as resistance in the near term. Uh, any moves beyond that. We, were, we really would need to be taking out the, uh, the, the mid-May highs of around 7,372 in order to be kind of more confident that the, uh, the recent downward trend has ended and, that, and, and we're looking at a resumption of the wider upward trend that has been in place uh, between, between late December and April. 
I take a look now at what's going on over in Germany on the DAX. Similar to the FTSE, the DAX hit a multi-month high uh, in early May. And now we're seeing the lower low, lower high, and another lower low. So we're pretty much hovering right, nearly very close to the, the DAX's 200 moving average, which comes into play at 11,621. If we can hold above that, uh, we, we could look at actually, we could look at actually kind of um, potentially, um, potentially moving higher, and which which would be in theme with the kind of wider trend of 2019. And if we can move higher from this area. We could be looking at heading up towards this blue line here, the 50 moving average, uh, which is just shy of uh, 12, 000, uh, 11,985. And we can see on a few occasions there, thereabouts, that metric did manage to act as support on the uh, on the way down. So it, it might act as resistance in the near term. And if you know we head north of 12,000, uh, then keep an eye for this area up here in around 12,318 or so, the, uh, the mid-May high. But uh, if the market does manage to have a size of break below the 30 moving average, uh, that will be, you know, obviously further multi-month lows, and you know, obviously, you know, yet again another lower low. So we could be looking at heading down towards this area here in around the kind of 12, 11,400. It did manage to act on a few occasions as support um, in uh, in early 2019, so it could do uh, act as support again in the near term. Take a look now at the Dow Jones. So coming off the highs of of of, of, um, of late April, early May, you know, similar situation where I've seen a lower low, a lower high, and another lower low. So we're actually on multi-month lows on the Dow Jones, and if you can, and you can see, there's been a, a um, on the on the MACD indicator, on the MACD histogram, there's been a fairly steady increase in negative momentum. So as the market's moving lower, that's being confirmed by the steady increase in negative momentum. So we can press on lower from here. We could be looking at targeting this area here in around the kind of important uh, psychological board at 24,000. But uh, if you did manage to have a bounce back uh, in the Dow Jones, we could be looking at heading back up towards this red line here, the 30 moving average, which comes into play in around 25,420. And you also notice that um, this, this, this trend line kind of almost effectively kind of coincides with the 30 moving average. And if you this trend line is quite old. So if you take a, a, a trend line from the lows of February 2018 to the lows of, um, of, uh, of April and also May 2018, you get this line along here. We can see that it acted as resistance and support um, in, in early 2019. So the possibility that that metric might be important again, especially as it, it kind of essentially overlaps with the 200 moving average. And it's only really if you have a kind of sizable break below, above that trend line, and which also coincides with the 200 moving average. It's only if you have a size break above that, because then we kind of become more confident that the, kind of, that the recent negative move has come to an end and at the more medium term upward trend is continuing. So if you do press on higher from here, we could be looking at targeting this blue line here, the 50 moving average, which comes to play at 25,000. 992. It is a very, a very similar situation on the S&P 500. Whereby coming off of the uh, the, uh, the highs that were set uh, in early May, we get the lower low, a lower high, and uh, yet again another lower low. So, and a steady increase in negative momentum. So if we can press on lower from here, um, we could be looking at targeting this area here. Uh, one of the early May, one of the early May lows in around 2,722, and should we go beyond that, we could be looking at heading towards the 2,000, it's the psychologically important number of 2,700. Similar situation whereby if we do have a bounce back in the uh, the S&P 500, uh, resistance might come into play from this red line here, the 30 moving average, which comes into play in around 7,772, and it also coincides. With the uh, with the trend line, and if you take a look, if you draw a low between the lows of February 2018, sorry, apologies, the lows of February 2016 and the lows of November 2016, we get this trend line along here. We can see that that metric was respected on a, on a few occasions in late 2018 and also in 2019. So, if the metric is important in the past, it makes it more likely it'll be so in the future. So, 
given the fact how that trend line is kind of in around the same area as the 30 moving average is likely to be important so while we remain south of it it's like it's likely that that outlook should remain negative but if you can have a slice move back above it uh, that could be a sign that the recent negative trend has come to an end so if you press on higher from here we could be looking at targeting this area here in around 2840. Now we've, we've talked about how um, some of the major global indice equity markets have been printing uh, multi-month lows given the uncertainty. But one of the areas, uh, one, of the, one of the markets which has been benefiting from this uh, uncertainty and fear in relation largely to trade uh, has been the gold market. So um, uh, we've seen the gold market press on higher today, as it did on Friday. And we've seen the gold market now back at levels not seen since, since late March. And we're currently in around... Um, 1316 the gold market and if you can hold above the psychologically important 1300 mark uh, it's likely we could be looking at retesting uh, the, the kind of mid to late April, mid to late March highs of, uh, of 1324 and if you go beyond that uh, we could be looking at adding toward this area here in around 1340 or potentially up towards the kind of the February highs of in around 1346 uh, any moves to the downside uh, in, uh, in, in gold are likely to find support from the kind of psychologically important 1300 mark or pressing this blue line here the 50 moving average which comes into play at 1287 and we can see that the metric managed to act as resistance uh, in mid-april and also acted as kind of both support resistance and support very recently so once again if a metric has been has been uh, important in the past it makes it more likely it will do so in the future um, turning attention now to what's going on in the uh, in the oil market Turning off of Brent crude. So Brent crude, like global equities, uh, has, had a, has had a fairly similar move, whereby between late December and about April May has had a fantastic run. Uh, but since then, we've seen the markets turn over. So the wider picture, um, you know, go, oh, the oil market is still very much upwards on the year. But as you can see here, from the highs that were created on Brent uh, in late April, we've had the lower low, a lower high, a lower low, a lower high, and so we've had a nice series of lower lows and lower highs. Uh, and that's still intact, in so we could potentially lose further ground on the oil market. Uh, and Brent could find support from this area here, they get a psychologically important 60 bucks per barrel area. Uh, if you do manage to press on lower from there, we could be looking at targeting this area here in around 57 spot 50. But if you do manage to have a bounce back uh, in the oil market, so resistance might come into play from this yellow line here, uh, the water moving average. We can see that acting as support. Uh, in the early part of 20, 2019, and on a few occasions, the market didn't quite get as low there, but nearly there, thereabouts, actually as, as support uh, only in, in the last uh, in, the, in the last few weeks. So keep an eye out for um, 67 spot 57, and also kind of the, the kind of 68 region and the 30 moving average that comes into play at 68 spot 92. So that entire block between say 68 spot 92 and down to 67 spot 57. That region might act as resistance to any uh, bounce backs in Brent. Uh, take a look now at WTI. WTI, similar situation, had a great run for the first month of 2019. We've had a lower low, a lower high, a lower low, another lower high, and yet again another lower low. So very recently this, the, the trend in, in WTI has been very much to the downside. And if you can press on lower from here on WTI, we could be targeting this area here in around the, um, the kind of mid-January lows of it around 50 spot 36. So between the kind of 50 spot 36 to the psychological support and 50 bucks per barrel, they might act, act as support. Uh, should, we get, should we continue to see further losses on um, on the Brent oil market, or sorry, on the WTI market rather? And if you move lower from there, the next area, potential area um, for support could be around the kind of $48 a barrel mark. We can see that there was some consolidation from the $48 mark uh, in, in early January. So once again, it might be important in the near term. Similar scenario, if you do have a bounce back um, in the WTI market, the one day moving average in at 58 spot 44, or up to the eternity moving average, the red line at just, just shy of 60 bucks per barrel, that might act as resistance. Um, Take a look now at a couple of currency pairs. So euro dollar continues to be in a fairly uh, obvious downward trend, a nice series of lower lows and lower highs. Um, 
there appears to be decent support from this area here in a, in a one spot 11.10 uh, but if you, if you do break below that we could then be looking heading that, that down towards the kind of psychologically, psychologically important one spot 10 metric. Uh, any moves to the upside uh, in euro dollar are likely to, to run to resistance from this blue line here the 50 moving average which comes into play at um, one spot 12 or 5 there thereabouts. We can see that on a few occasions um, in the last few weeks and months the 50 moving average did manage to act at resistance so keep an eye out for that and I, but if you do have a size of the move above the 50 moving average we could be looking at targeting this region here in at one spot 13.22 i'll take a look now um, at the british pound versus the us dollar uh, i mentioned president trump is in town so keep an eye out for any comments he has to make on, on the state of, of uh, british politics or the relationship between the uk and the european union or the potential the, the, the new relationship between the uk and the us uh, post brexit uh, so keep an eye out for that we could see volatility in the pound over that uh, the pound has had a ter terrible run uh, the last few weeks we can see you know, you know um, quite, uh, quite a few losses uh, in recent weeks and in fact, in fact only on friday uh, we fall back to a level not seen since uh, since early january so if the negative run uh, on the pound c continues we could be looking at targeting this area here in around one spot 2476 uh, but if you do have any kind of move to the upside or kind of snaps back uh in the in, in cable british pound versus us dollar it could run, it run into resistance from this area here in around one spot 28. Uh, i'll take a look now at the week ahead the week ahead article can be found on our website if you go to cmcmarkets.com under news and analysis uh, you will find the uh, the weekend article and um, looking ahead for the week in terms of corporate and economic announcements AO World have full year results tomorrow um, tomorrow and Wednesday we have the Reserve Bank of Australia interest rate decision uh, Australian GDP and also retail sales coming out and then, uh, between across Wednesday Tuesday and Wednesday uh, we have first quarter figures from salesforce.com tomorrow and Tuesday um, on Tuesday and Thursday, uh, we have uh, Eurozone inflation and also the European Central Bank meeting. The ECB uh, are launching uh, a new round of target liquidity at the back end of this year, so we hopefully get more details on that. Uh, on Wednesday, we have full year figures from Workspace, uh, the London listed company. On Wednesday, we have an update from the, we have the Beige Book, which gives a snapshot of the, uh, the, state, of, of the state of the US economy. And on Friday, we have the all important non farm payrolls, uh, non -farm payrolls report. We are holding a, a live webinar of the non farm payrolls report, so please feel free to sign up for that. Uh, on our platform, um, cmcmarkets.com, this is under the learn section. You can see the um, webinars and seminars page. Uh, and also on, on Friday, we have the Canadian jobs data. So we'd like to, like to see volatility in the US dollar and Canadian dollar. Uh, and also keep in mind on Friday, uh, Theresa May is stepping down as leader of the Conservative Party. So keep an eye out for political headlines in relation to who is likely to be the, uh, the next Tory leader and in turn British Prime Minister. If you have any comments to make on this video or any of the other videos we've made here at CFC Markets, please feel free to leave a review on Clubbies. And that's all for me this week. Thank you very much.